consultation today. But without further ado, I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get right into this interview, and I hope you guys enjoy. Peace. What's going on, you guys? Marvin Francois here, and today is a very, very special day. Now, I know I say that every time, but this time I'm serious. And the reason being is because it's not just me today, all right? I have a very, very special guest with me, Mr. Doreen Delavante, a.k.a. Mr. Credit Hero, a.k.a. Do For Self, a.k.a. Mr. Consumer Law Mastery. I can go on and on. I, I, I can go on and on, all right? Now, I don't want to say too much, but I just want to let y'all know we're going to get into a lot of jewels, a lot of gems, and a lot of sauce in this video from this man right here. But before we do that, if you haven't already, go ahead and take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day right here, right now. Just go ahead and slap that like button and show this video some love. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Mr. Duran Levante, how are you, my good Thank time? you, my brother. Thank you. How's yeah. everything? It's good. Life's right. been great. Bless it's phenomenal. And truly flavor, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm doing even better now that I'm speaking to you. Come on, man. And you. Come on, man. Come on, man. This is, so, yeah. um, this, this has been long in the making. Long in the making. About, and it's about time. Right. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Doreen Delavante. I am a consumer law expert. I am a military veteran. Mm -hmm. And I teach you how to do for self. Mm -hmm. And what the, what do for self means is you taking, you taking control of your finances. You taking control of your credit that makes it better not just for you, but your family, you teach your kids. You be that credit hero in your family that everyone comes to to get themselves right. I'm a big advocate of group economics because like I always say, if there's 10 people in your household and mm -hmm. each person got a line of credit of $10,000, mm -hmm. y'all got 100K, what can y'all do with 100K? So um, do for self. Yeah, yeah. I, listen, I'm very excited to have you. Like you said, this is a long time in the making. This is true. I talk all things credit on my channel, but never have I ever dived into this, right? And you do this. You eat, sleep, and breathe consumer law. We won't get into that, but first, I want to give the audience a chance to learn a little bit more about you, right? So obviously, you're very heavy into the financial literacy space. Uh, talk to us a little bit about and educate our audience a little bit about how you came into the financial, space, financial literacy space. What exactly was your introduction to it? So, that's a really good question. Um, I was sick and tired of being told no. My first car, you need a co-signer. Right. My first apartment, you don't have enough credit. Mm -hmm. You need a co-signer again. Mm -hmm. Then the, you need a co-signer again. I'm like, shit. Right. Why do I always need a co-signer? I'm a man. Why do I need somebody else to say he's okay? Mm -hmm. So it led me down a rabbit hole of start investigating what credit is. But, you know, I didn't go too deep in it. I got a credit card here and there, um, $200 limit, a $300 limit. I'm just going to use it for gas. Facts. I'm only going to use it for groceries Facts. until I met a mentor. A lot of people know him as him 500 the biggest. But, you know, big 500. Big 500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my mentor, Marcus Barney, a.k.a. him 500, mm -hmm. said a phrase. I'm going to teach you how to turn credit to cash. Mm -hmm. I was like, what sorcery is this guy talking about? Sorcery. I was like, yo. <laughs> but I... then Marcus broke the game down and it's never been the same since. Right. So learning how to turn credit to cash, learning how to liquidate credit cards, learning how to get high limits, mm -hmm. plus credit cards that have no preset limit, mm -hmm. that you become a dangerous animal. Uh, put that together now, learning consumer laws, there's absolutely nothing you cannot do. Mm -hmm. And that is what I teach in my program, my mm -hmm. Do For Self program, mm -hmm. that um, you can find at um, DoreenDelevante.com. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you put that into Google, you'll see it pull up the credit hero, and you can just see what's on my website. You'll see my bio, go read about me, and you'll get the sauce on what's going on. Love it, I absolutely love it. Now, you said something that was very key, right? You talked about a mentor that we both share, right? Marcus Barney, shout out to him, Big Him 500. Yep, Big 500. Big life changer. We can, we can, we, we can dedicate this whole episode that we're going to. That's how much sauce this man is giving us, right? But we, we're not gonna get into that yet. We're not gonna get into that yet. But you, you mentioned credit, right? Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, both of us, uh, uh, as black men, you of Jamaican nationality, me of Haitian nationality. Neighbor. Right. There you go. <laughs> right? Yeah, there you go. My brother. My brother. But we come from cultures. We come from backgrounds where credit is taboo. Mm -hmm. Right? Some people's introduction to credit was their parents or their relatives telling them, like, yo, stay away from that. Only use it for emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, some people's introduction to credit was, like, only use cash. Stay away from credit. Credit is the devil. You never want to put Perfect. yourself in credit, right? I, you know, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I'd probably be rich enough to buy the word credit. That, that's how crazy it is, right? 
But you and I, through mentorship and, and so many different resources and programs, have now learned how to use credit to literally change our lives. I've talked about it ad nauseum on my channel. Talk a little bit about how huge of an impact credit has had on your journey, just as an individual, but also as an entrepreneur. So, I don't hear no's anymore. Mm. That, that, That's a bar. Right? Yeah. I, I don't hear no's anymore. Right, right. now it's Mr. Duray. Love Dude, it. I've built an 800 out three times. My first time was on deployment. I was in Kuwait. I built my first 805 in the middle of the desert. I wasn't even in the United States. Crazy. I built the first one over there. Came back. I leveraged it. That 70K word of credit. Wrecked it again, right? Mm -hmm. Fell down to like seven, uh, 777, mm -hmm. right? Built it back up to an 810. Wrecked it again. Got some more funding. Mm -hmm. And right now, I mean, I'm right now in the process of wrecking my 810. Mm -hmm. Um... Remember the car I told you I got for free? Yeah. We're going to give them more sauce on that later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So remind yeah. me about that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm wrecking it again because I'm building up my tour of it. Right. So I'm about to wreck this whole credit. And I'm going to teach y'all how I, I'm going to stop the accounts from reporting. Right. So mm. they pulled it. Inquiry is there. Oh, that's fine. Uh -huh. But I'm going to block the account being reported mm -hmm. and I'm gonna give you all the sauce on that too. Mm -hmm. So imagine if I go get 10 cars mm -hmm. and right now I block all 10 cars from reporting. Right. It's like I never got them. That's a fact. My yeah. debt to income right. ratio stays down. Right, right. My utilization stays down. I mm -hmm. don't even get into utilization because I'm gonna show you all that um, late payments are illegal mm -hmm. and utilizations are illegal. Wait, wait, you say, don't, don't, don't. Don't let that go over here. You said late payments are illegal. Late payments are illegal and utilizations are illegal. And I'll prove it. Goodness great. All right, well, I mean, let, let, let's get right into it because obviously within the world of credit, right, you and I dibble and dabble in credit repair. And anybody who's ever had any experience with credit repair, we've heard about 609 letters. Those are very notorious for credit repair. We've heard of FTC reports, right? And the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, for those of you that, that, that may or may not know, but the field of expertise that you now dabble in is, is something that slowly but surely people are starting to learn about, but still a large majority of people don't know about, right? And that's consumer law mastery, right? Talk to the audience a little bit about what exactly is consumer law, because before we can master it, we must first understand it, right? So help introduce the people to what exactly consumer law is and why is it so important to the world of credit? Well, as it says, consumer law, it's made for the consumer. Mm -hmm. It's not lawyer law. It's not bar law. Mm -hmm. It's consumer law. Mm -hmm. So these are law that's put in place to protect you. A lot of people don't know that the United States is not a country, mm -hmm. but a federal corporation. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Say that again so that they uh, hear you. Say it again. So a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. that the United States is a federal corporation. Mm -hmm. It's not a country. Uh, you have, um, you can pull Google up real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Alright. Let's see if I remember. Um, 28 USC. 28 USC. 3002. 3002. Okay. Go ahead. Go down to 15. Give me a second here. 15. Okay. What does it say? <laughs> it says the United States means A, a federal corporation. B, a agency, department, commission, board, or other entity of the United States, or C, an instrumentality of the United States. So, it's a corporation. Right. We are all in commerce. People don't even know it. I run around saying that I'm a citizen, I'm a citizen. A citizen is a corporation. Right. That's crazy. You're a consumer right. in this corporation, and the consumer laws protect you as the consumer. That's why they're so powerful. But people talk about, they give a bad light to it because if we all knew the truth about credit, there would be no recession. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, let's see. Oh, you got more. 15 USC. Okay, let's do it. 1601. 15 USC 1601. Truth in lending. What does the congressional finding say? Mm. Okay, what are we doing? We start from A? Yeah, see the congressional finding. What does it say? The Congress finds that economic stabilization would be enhanced and the competition among the various financial institutions of other firms engaged in the extension of consumer credit would be strengthened 
by the informed use of credit. You want me to keep going? No, no, that's it. Oh, okay, boom. So, in truth and lending, Congress has said, if we all knew the truth about credit, there would be no recession. Mm -hmm. We have unlimited credit. Mm -hmm. Just don't know how to tap into it. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Those that know how to tap into it, they're at the top. We call them the rich. We call them the wealthy. Whatever y'all want to call them. Mm -hmm. But they know the truth about credit. Why do you think some of these people can file bankruptcy 10 times and still be a billionaire, bro? That's a fact. They know the truth about credit. But we were taught, I'm going to put the light bill in Joe's name. Yep. I'm going to put the cable in Susie's name. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to get the gym membership in Ron's name. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, the child comes out. Now the child's of age. You got four to five collections on your, on your credit report. Mm -hmm. Can't even get a credit card. Mm -hmm. If they're going to go get a car now, they need a co-signer. Now you're talking about interest rates of 10 to 18, probably 25%. Right. But what the others are doing is... Mm -hmm. They're teaching their kids about credit, right? Mm -hmm. At 14 and 16, mm -hmm. they're putting their kids as authorized users on their credit card. They're coming out of high school, going into college with a 750 already ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. What are we doing wrong? That's a fact. That's a fact. Wow. Congress told it. If we knew the truth about credit, there would be no recession. Mm -hmm. So it's a double edged sword. One family teaches their kids something totally different. Mm -hmm. But we were told that credit is bad. Mm -hmm. um, don't get in debt. Mm -hmm. The wealthiest people on the planet have the most debt. That's a fact. Like, I don't get it. Like, how do you not see it? Mm -hmm. How long would it take for you to save up 50,000? Cash? Yeah. Maybe like two years, three years maybe. I can get that in 24 hours in credit. Leveraging one credit score, one. Mm -hmm. Right now, I can apply and I can get approved tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You don't need to save. Mm -hmm. You have unlimited credit. Mm -hmm. You have unlimited credit. I'm gonna say it again. You have unlimited credit. You just gotta learn how to tap it. Once you learn how to use it, how to structure a profile, mm -hmm. how to delete inquiries, mm -hmm. how to delete late payments, bankruptcies, people do. I can show you right now how you can get paid for repossession. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, just, let's get right into it. Let's talk about it because you you give it a lot of sauce right now. You give it a lot of jewels, a lot of jewels. I, I know how you get. You got, you know, I'm not going to. Let's keep it going because you were talking about late payments being illegal. Now you're talking about getting paid for repossessions. Let's start getting into some of that sauce. Let's start off with the repossession. You just said that you could teach us how to get paid off of repossession. Give us a step-by-step -step breakdown. All right, so a lot of people, there's four parts to repossession, right? Right. It needs to be peaceful. They can't come and throw you out of the car and take it. There can't be any altercations. You know, no threat of violence or use of violence. Mm -hmm. That in itself voids the whole process. Mm -hmm. And then now uh, the consumer can sue the lender mm -hmm. and get that balance zeroed out, mm -hmm. right? Um, the second part is a pre-sale letter. Mm -hmm. They must send you a pre-sale letter mm -hmm. stating that the vehicle is going to be sold with a private or um, public. And when, um, um, like, they're going to have details in there mm -hmm. that you're going to see mm -hmm. when you go to um, UCC 9, mm -hmm. part 6. So UCC Article 9, part 6. Shall I let that up? Yeah, go ahead. It deals with repossession. UCC? UCC 9. Uh -huh. Part six. Part six. Yeah, it should bring you to like default of collateral. Yeah, the uniform commercial code. Oh, yeah. Where do I, I? A couple of different links are popping up. Where do I go? All right. So let's talk about um, getting paid for repossession. All right. Where do I go? Um, so remedies. Go to remedies. Where is that at? At the bottom. Things that twenty nine twenty six. Nine twenty six. Action. I see action. It should say remedy. Yeah, boom, 925, sorry. Remedies yeah. for secured parties failure to comply yeah. with article. There we go. You want me to read A? Yeah, read A for me. Judicial orders concerning non-compliance. If it is established that a secured party is not proceeding in accordance. So, stop. A secured party is the creditor or the lender. The person that have the security interest in the collateral. Continue. Got you. So if it is established that a secured party is not proceeding in accordance with this article, a court 
may order or restrain collection, enforcement, or disposition of collateral on appropriate terms and conditions. So if you can prove that the um, repossession wasn't peaceful, mm -hmm. or the pre-sale letter wasn't sent, or they didn't send you a post-sale letter, mm. or you can prove that it wasn't an arm's length transaction, you can void the whole repossession. So no more repossession. A repossession is repossession done re, off. Re, repossession, repossession done off. Repossession done. Done off. So back inside of remedies, right? There's a mm -hmm. part in remedies. Okay. What part? Um, where it says the damages for non-compliance. Yeah, right there. So B damages for non-compliance. Make sure y'all make sure y'all taking notes. This is, Please pay listen, attention. Pay attention. All right. Subject to subsection C, D, and F. A person is liable for damages in the amount of any loss caused by a failure to comply with this article. Loss caused by a failure to comply may include loss resulting from the debtor's inability to obtain or increased cost of alternative financing. You understood what you just read? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah, please explain. To Read me. it again. All right, there you go. Here we go. One time. <laughs> Subject to subsections and uh, C, D, and F. A person is liable for damages in the amount of any loss. Any loss. Right. If you're re if you're invested in real estate, okay. I know you, you do Airbnb or you're going to do Airbnb. Right. If you were to go on a big deal right now, mm -hmm. and let's say that because of erroneous and false information mm -hmm. that they put on your consumer report mm -hmm. and the repossession caused you to lose that deal of 500000 any Damages. Mm -hmm. Read that wow. again. Read Good. that again with that in mind. Subject to subsection C, D, and F, a person is liable for damages in the amount of any loss, any loss. caused by a failure to comply with this article. Mm -hmm. Loss caused by a failure to comply may include loss resulting from the debtor's inability to obtain or uh, or increase cost of alternative financing. And this, can, is, this is law. You can get paid for repossession. Let me think. Let me think. Because <clears throat> we just get started. So this is law. This isn't something that you made up. This isn't something that I you. Mean, a theory unless, that you have. unless I have the power that Congress have, I'll go write some shit. <laughs> so just just reiterate. Just so, just so anybody, This law is what again? This is UCC C nine. Uh huh. UCC Article nine. Right. Part six twenty six twenty five. So part six goes from six o one to six twenty eight. Remedies for secured parties' failure to comply with article. But that's just the remedy part. Right. It goes more. So when you press back and you get out and get out of that, right? That's the whole part. Just, six. just everything. All in the six hundred. That's part six. Yeah. So you just not only told us how to get rid of a repossession, but also how we as consumers can also get paid for repossession, paid for repossession. as well. And that's just one part of a credit report. There are other different things. I, right, with, look, let, let's talk about late payments now, right? Okay. Because you just said that late payments are illegal. There's somebody mm -hmm. who's watching this who probably got 80, 40, 50, 30, I would hope not, late payments out the wazoo, and they're trying to, they're hiring Lexington Law, they're hiring all these different people, <laughs> right, to, to get rid of these <laughs> late payments. Here you come on, right, dapper as dapper could be, but you're saying late payments is illegal. Somebody may be watching this thing themselves. How, how is that possible? How exactly are late payments illegal? Okay, go oh, we go, we're going back. We're doing research. Let's do All it. Right. 15 USC, mm -hmm. 1681A. 1681A. There we go. It's going to bring you to the Fair Credit Reporting Act. I'm here. It should bring you to the definitions, rules of construct. Yeah. Go down to number two. Number two. Exclusions. Boom. Read it. All right. Yeah. Read exclusions for me. Except as provided in paragraph, the term consumer report does not include A, subject to. All right. Hold on. What is a consumer report? Click on consumer report because we need to overstand the definition of the word. I love it. Let's go. Consumer report. So in general, the term consumer report means any written, oral, or other communication of any information by a consumer reporting agency bearing on a consumer's credit worthiness, credit standing, credit capacity, character, general reputation, personal characteristics, or mode of living which is used or expected to be used or collected in whole or in part for the purpose of serving as a factor in establishing the consumer's eligibility for, and then it keeps going. You want me to keep going? Okay, so when we talk about your consumer report, doesn't that sound like what TransUnion produced, mm -hmm. 
um, Experian, mm-hmm. um, Equifax, Equifax, mm-hmm. Lexus, Nexus, right. Sage Street, ARS, ARS Innovis, Innovis, Core Logic. Yep. yep. Doesn't that sound like what they produce? Right. No, go back to number two. So now that you know what the definition of a consumer report is, read it again. Number two, except as provided in paragraph, the term consumer report does not include, right? I'm going to read Does not include. Right. What does does not include mean? That's not supposed to be in there. Okay. There you go. So we're going to go from I, I. No, you're just going to read I. Okay. Report containing information solely as to transactions or experiences between consumer the light bulb went off, didn't it? and the person making the report. There the you light, go. The light bulb, the light bulb went, went off. off. All right. Let me read All that right. again. For me. A report containing information solely as to transactions or experiences between the consumer and the person making the report. What does person mean? Wait, before you click person, what does consumer mean? Well, uh, consumer is uh, just, a, I guess, a regular person. It's right there. Click yeah. on consumer. Consumer. The term consumer means an individual. Right. Exactly. Press back. Now, person. Person. What does person mean? Per- the term person means any individual, partnership, corporation, trust, estate, cooperative, association, government, or governmental subdivision or agency or other entity. Press back. <laughs> no, read it again. <clears throat> Report containing any information solely as to transactions or experiences between the consumer and the person making the report. So now you know that person means a corporation. Right. So what is Capital One? Mm-hmm. What is American Express? What is Citibank? Mm-hmm. What is Navy Federal? So your transaction mm-hmm. is your payment history. Right. Because it's your transaction with the line of credit mm-hmm. that the person the corporation mm-hmm. extended to you. Right. Your experience is the amount of credit you're using. Right. On that line mm-hmm. between you, the consumer, right, and the person making the report. So, if the term consumer report does not include mm-hmm. transactions mm-hmm. and experiences, where does late payments? and utilizations come from. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. Just, just, just one more time. Just one more time. Just one more time. So, if, mm-hmm. right? Congress goes, I'm not making it up. You're it's a, it's, 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 it's a, literally here 15 involved. USC, mm-hmm. 1681. A right. to A1. Right. Right? Congress said, mm-hmm. your consumer report mm-hmm. does not include transactions or experiences between the consumer Mm -hmm. and the person making the report. Right. The line of credit and what you use is how you use it. Those are your transactions. Right. When you swipe, those are your transactions. Your payment history, those are transactions. Mm -hmm. Your experience is the line of credit. Mm -hmm. So if the consumer report doesn't (laughs) <laughs> doesn't include or does not include the transactions mm-hmm. or the experiences, mm-hmm. where does a late payment come from? Where does high utilization come from? Mm-hmm. It's not supposed to be here in the first place. So with these same consumer laws that we're seeing, these are the laws that we can now use to dispute on our own behalf. Delete everything. everything. Okay, okay. So now we talked about Repossessions. That's a very popular one for a lot of people, right? Because mm-hmm. everyone has a car. We got car notes, things of that nature. We talked about late payments. So let me talk about, I don't want you to give away too much sauce. You don't got to give me too much sauce. I want to talk about another one that's very popular, especially uh, amongst a lot of different people I talked to in the world of credit. I'm sure you are familiar with too. Let's talk about collections now. Mm-hmm. Collections is a whole nother monster in and of itself, right? When it comes to credit. Well, I teach people how to get paid off of collections. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. How, how do we deal with collections now? All right, so collections is the funniest thing for me. I enjoy collections. Okay, why is that? Because for every violation, you can get a thousand dollars plus damages. Say that one more time. Say that one more for time. Every violation of the FDCPA, okay. which is the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, mm-hmm. fifteen USC sixteen ninety two, for every violation. You want me to look that up? Oh yeah, go ahead. Fifteen. Hold on. Fifteen USC. Mm-hmm. Sixteen. Sixteen ninety two. Okay, sixteen ninety two. Gonna open that up. 
Congressional findings and declaration of purpose. Where am I going for this one? All right, depends on what you want to find. It's a, I, I'm, I see some about abusive practices and adequacy no. of laws. Go down to um, go back and go down to civil liability because I said you can get paid a thousand dollars. So when you go back, well, if I go back and bring you go down to the bottom one. Oh, this one? Yeah, that collection practices. Yep. So it's going to give you sections now. Now go down to go down to K. You should say civil liability. Kicking civil liability. All right. Now this is for collections now, right? All right. So when we're at civil liability, now right. read what it says. It's going to tell you the amount of damages. Yeah. Okay. So, Got you. So this is 15 U.S. Code 1692K. This is civil liability, right? This is the law. Man. This isn't. We didn't put this together for the video. You can find the same information we talked about in this video, right? It's legal. It's right there. It's right there. We're going to go to a amount of damages. So except as otherwise provided by this section, any debt collector who fails to comply with any provision of this subchapter with respect to any person is liable to such person in an amount equal to some of, and then keep going. Some of what, keep going. And one, any actual damage sustained by person. Don't read so fast, that's why we miss it. Okay. Any actual damage. Mm -hmm. If I lost a million dollar deal mm -hmm. because of unfair debt collection practices, mm -hmm. I am entitled to those damages, bro. Crazy. That's a million dollars worth of game right there. Right. Keep going. Okay, I'm gonna slow it down to that. So number one, any actual damage sustained by such person as a result of such failure, right? Then we go to 2A. In the case of any action by an individual, such additional damages as the court may allow, but not exceeding a thousand dollars. You want me to keep going? Yeah, we can stop there. Okay. So I just show you how you can get a thousand dollars per violation. Right. But like I said, if you're an investor mm -hmm. and you lost out on a deal, mm -hmm. that deal that you lost, mm -hmm. you can uh, sue for that deal. Mm. Actual damages, they damage your character. That caused you not, that caused a deal to fall through. Mm -hmm. You've been damaged. FDCPA says you can go get your remedy. Mm -hmm. Someone on my Zoom the other night said King Remedy. I think I'm gonna run with that name. King Remedy, I like bro, that name. Okay. I'm telling you bro. Like, I can teach you how to get paid off a good school law. And this is, money. we're just talking about collections, repossessions, and late payments. We haven't even gotten into student loans. We haven't gotten into a, a charge-offs. But th those are just three of many different things that end up on credit reports, right? So, all right. There's so much stuff that's on there that is not true. Okay. 80% like of the American public have incorrect information on their consumer report. Okay. Don't even know, mm -hmm. right? Um... What I want all of y'all to know, everything with credit that you can possibly think of, I've sat down and I've thought about your problem longer and harder than you, mm -hmm. and I've come up with a solution. This is why I do what I do, mm -hmm. and this is why I teach, mm -hmm. and that's why on my website, uh, um, DoreenDelevante.com, mm -hmm. which we'll drop in the link below, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you'll see, you'll see the student loan deletion package, mm -hmm. you'll see the repossession manuscript, you'll see the how to delete the bankruptcy, it's called Do For Self, a guide to deleting your own bankruptcy. Like, everything that you could have, it's built around consumer law. Right. Because the consumer law was made for the consumer. Right. If you wanna go get a remedy, mm -hmm. I got that too. So, so, Give a, give, giving a lot of gems, a lot of sauce here on, on this uh, on the sit down, right? We talked about consumer law, mm -hmm. right? We touched a little bit about FCRA. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about the FDCPA, mm -hmm. but I wanted to talk a little bit about the TILA, right? Let's talk about TILA a little bit because if I remember correctly, you I think you just got a car recently. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think you talked about it on Instagram. You got a car recently for free, like no okay. money down, anything like that, right? Okay, so free means <clears throat> I can't, I didn't come out of pocket for it. Okay. So it's basically like you giving me your iPhone. Right. I got it for free. Right. So went to the dealer, told him what I wanted. Great. I leveraged one credit score experience. So I got a Kia because I'm going to give it to my boy, Maurice, or Maurice, I know Maurice. to, to um, run for Toro. Right. So I went there. Kia Motor Financials, they pulled from Experian. Mm -hmm. So I unfroze my Experian because... My um, do for self the secret lenders list. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, do for self a lender's guide to getting your own approval. There we go. It teaches you who pulls from where. Mm -hmm. 
So with that book, I went through my own book mm -hmm. and I said, who does Kia pull from? Mm -hmm. Experian. Mm -hmm. I unfroze my Experian. Mm -hmm. I went there. I told him I wanted to be. I already know I had an 810. I wasn't worried about it. Mm -hmm. Right? Fill the paperwork up, yada, yada, yada. They came back now. I was breaking down what a finance charge is, and the guy was looking at me crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, how does he know about that? Mm -hmm. It's all good. Mm -hmm. I said, let me see my truth in lending statement. Mm. Right? Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't go. A lot of people watching this mean I know what the truth in lending statement. So let's first go into that before you break down the rest of the play. So they call it a retail installment contract. Okay. You know that thing that they give you and it has two boxes on the left. Right. And it's four boxes. Right, right, right. Two on the left, two on the right. But the two on the left, it's brighter right. than the other two. Right. Because on the truth in lending, those two boxes that speaks about APR mm -hmm. and finance charge, they must be more conspicuous than any other box. Okay. So I know this going in. Mm -hmm. So I saw what my finance charge was. Mm -hmm. I know what's supposed to be the finance charge. So go ahead, your phone. Yeah, what do you need me to look up now? 15 USC. 15 USC. 1605. 1605. It's going to bring me to truth in lending to the finance charge. Determination of, determination of finance yeah. charge. You may start from A? Yeah, we were the finance charge. So finance charge is, except as otherwise provided in this section, the amount of the finance charge in connection with any consumer credit transaction. Which is what I went there for. Right. I didn't go there for a retail installment contract. Right. I went there for a consumer credit transaction. Right. So any consumer credit transaction shall be determined as the sum of all charges payable directly or indirectly by the person to whom the credit is extended and imposed. Wait, the, say it again. Payable directly or indirectly by the person to whom the credit is extended. Okay. Right? And imposed directly or indirectly by the creditor as an incident to the extension of credit. Okay. You want to keep going? Keep going. The finance charge does not include charges of a type payable in a comparable cash transaction. Shut down payments are illegal. If it's a consumer credit transaction, there is no cash involved. They asked me for a down payment. I said, my finance charge says that there's no cash transaction. Mm -hmm. There is no down payment. Mm -hmm. So Don't ask me about a down payment. We can go to the, and using this same law. Well, I just did it. Bypass and down payment. Continue. All right, right. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm still here. To whom the credit is extended and imposed directly or indirectly by the creditor as an incident to the extension of credit. Going back to where I was at, the finance charge does not include charges of a type payable in comparable cash transaction. The finance charge shall not include fees and amounts imposed by third party closing agents, including settlement agents, attorneys and escrow and title companies if the creditor does not require the imposition of the charges or the services provided and does not retain the charges. Keep going. Examples of charges which are included in the finance charge mm -hmm. include any of the following types of charges which are applicable. Okay, this is about to get interesting. Interest, mm -hmm. time, price differential, mm -hmm. and any amount payable under a point discount or other system or additional charges. So no, when they talk about dealer fee, documents fee and all that, mm -hmm. my finance charge take care of all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one paying it. Mm -hmm. That's included in my finance charge. Mm -hmm. So when I got the, the, the retail installment contract and I was leaving, I noticed they didn't ask me about insurance. They asked me if I had insurance. Mm -hmm. My finance charge Includes insurance. Look, it's crazy. It's gonna say premium. Keep reading. Two, service or carrying charge. Three, loans fee, finder's fee, or similar charge. Four, fee for an investigation or credit report. Five, premium or other charge for any guarantee or insurance protecting the creditors against the ob obligors default or other credits loss. All right. So they have an insurance. Mm -hmm. So the finance charge also pays for an insurance that covers the lenders or the creditor. If I, the consumer, default. Mm -hmm. So if I default, there's an insurance that was paid that covered their loss, mm -hmm. right? But not only that, my insurance is also supposed to be included. Right. So 
a lot of people say, well, I want fucking gap insurance. Mm -hmm. I'm not paying for it. Throw that in the finance charge. Mm -hmm. That's why it's there. Mm -hmm. So my payment went up like thirty dollars more. Mm -hmm. But no, I have gap that was included. So right now, if I drive off a lot and an eighteen wheeler T bone the car and it's total, mm -hmm. and the car now that I paid twenty five thousand for mm -hmm. is worth nineteen, mm -hmm. that gap fills that void. I don't have a deficiency balance. All for free, not one dime out of pocket. Goodness gracious. So you basically just gave a step-by-step, play-by-play on why a down payment is legal. You read it. I didn't. I, mind you, this is, this is the, I didn't. I ain't type it up. This is on on the internet, right? This is actual real-life consumer yeah. law that people choose in London. And what you get? This is 15 U.S. Code 1605. This is the determination of a finance, finance charge. charge. Yeah. A lot of people don't even know what a finance charge is. Right. Hmm. It's powerful stuff. Right. So. Man, <laughs> I'm, I feel like I'm learning this episode too. Okay, so there's so much more. I, we, we could go on for hours and hours, but just to just to kind of close everything out, right? We started off talking about how for money, like, like you and me, our introduction to credit was that of a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Stay away from credit. Credit is bad, cash only. We only gonna use cash. We both get introduced to different resources, information, and mentors and mentorships mm -hmm. that teach us not only is credit powerful, but how we can use our credit to turn it to cash, how we can use things like consumer law to leverage credit in our benefit, right? So for somebody who may be watching this video and who, whose mind may literally be blown because they didn't know anything about consumer law, TILA, FDCPA, FCRA, what, what are some closing remarks that you could share with them as it pertains to credit? And also, of course, talk about your program as well. So biggest thing that I can say is mindset. It's 100% mindset. Right. If the garden of your mind isn't ready mm -hmm. for the seed that's going to be planted, there will be no growth. Mm -hmm. Growth comes through a shift in the mind. They call it a paradigm shift. If your mind isn't ready to accept this type of information, mm -hmm. you're not going to accept it. Mm -hmm. It's facts. So, the mindset first mm -hmm. and then the hunger as Les Brown says you got to be hungry what are you hungry for mm -hmm. are you hungry to learn mm -hmm. or do you just want to be a victim of oh it's unfair oh I got denied well you could keep saying that mm -hmm. or you could just get your shit together right and gain control of your finances right by learning the information right so until enough like when you're at the point where, in where, when the sponsor, if all you can do is all you can do, but make sure that all you can do is all you can do. Okay, that's a, that's interesting. Yeah, gotcha. uh, it, it, very interesting. Right, right, right. So, make sure that you are ready, and when you are ready, and when you are hungry, the answers will come. Like you'll be surprised when you start vibrating a specific frequency, mm -hmm. the things that come to you, mm -hmm. people think it's crap. Mm -hmm. It's not the law of attraction is real. Right. It is real as it's more than, you can't see it. Just like, you can't see that either. Right. It's there. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, people have to decide that they're willing to take a chance on themselves. Right. I can't take a chance on you if you're not willing to take a chance on yourself. Mm -hmm. Because that's a losing battle. Every time. You have to be able to pull your own slack. Mm -hmm. And then when you start learning this stuff and you want and you understand mm -hmm. that you can literally change the dynamic of how your credit reports, mm -hmm. there is absolutely nothing you can't do. Mm -hmm. You can build out a profile, tear it down, rebuild it right away. Mm -hmm. You can go sue for damages. You can get paid. You can set these company up to violate you so you lose out on a deal and you get them on the back end. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. There's so much things you can do. Right. Credit goes far than, oh, I'm just gonna buy groceries, I'm just gonna put gas. Oh, this three digit credit score that everybody talks about. Right. Credit goes way beyond that. We didn't even talk about turning credit to cash. 
We didn't even speak about manufacturing spending. Right. We didn't even speak about how to travel for free. We didn't even speak how our friend Rashida lives free because mm -hmm. she converts her points to pay her rent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the equipment that we're using right now, Point. I got it for free Point. off my Amex. Mm -hmm. I put my Amex on my Amazon, it transcribed the points into dollars, and I bought all this equipment. Right. It's crazy. It's a whole game out there. It's a whole new world, yeah. Yeah. But we're worried about, oh, I don't run my utilization up. Utilization is illegal. Right. It shouldn't even be on there in the first place. Right. A lot of people got affected by COVID last year, mm -hmm. and those late payments that are on there are costing people and families so much opportunities. Right. If only they knew that the shit was illegal. Right. Like, what can your family do with this type of information? Yeah. It's a game changer, bro. Game changer. Man. Man. De definitely, definitely powerful, definitely life changing. Um, just to close things out, tell people where they can find you and also how they can, of course, tap into the program that you offer as well. So, um, I'm on Instagram as the credit hero, mm -hmm. the underscore credit underscore hero, mm -hmm. or if you type in my name, Doreen De Levante, so that's D A R A I N E mm -hmm. D E L E V A N T E, mm -hmm. or if you go in Google. And you go to reindelevante.com, mm -hmm. it's going to bring you to my website, mm -hmm. and you're going to see a list of all the products. I do Zooms regular. Like, mm -hmm. my voice is just coming back. I was in it, he did a webinar just the other day. I was in it, he was in there for seven hours. Seven, seven hours. Games. Like, this, this, what we talked about this today, is nothing compared to what how deep consumer law really gets. It's a whole thing. He was in there for seven hours, just going, going, going. I left, came back, he was still going, voice force. And that was half of the presentation. I can do a full 20 hour presentation, bro. Just on consumer law. Just on alone. consumer law. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And you said in your program, basically, you dive more into. Way deeper. Right. Because now we're going to talk how you construct your letters, mm -hmm. what to look for in the violations. If you get collection notices, mm -hmm. the logo shouldn't be on there. That's $1,000 if it's on there. On the envelope. If the logo is on the letter, that's another thousand dollars. If you discern language in there to be threatening mm -hmm. or abusive, that's another thousand. Mm -hmm. Every violation in there is a thousand dollars plus damages that you can get mm -hmm. if that collection cost you a deal or two or three. Right, it's a whole thing. It's a whole system, bro. Right, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. crazy. So the, the 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 community, the mastermind. The do for self community is a community where we get on a Zoom, every, like it's it's coaching. Mm -hmm. You're doing for self. I'm not doing this for you. Mm -hmm. I am not responsible for your success. You're responsible for your own success. As a bar, because yeah. your results are in direct proportion to the effort that you put in. Right. I'm not putting in the effort for you. I thought about your problem way harder, way longer. I made the packages, I made the bundles, I gave you the resources. How will you use them? With great powers come great responsibility. <laughs> totally stole that from Spider Man. But the shit is true. true. It's true. The shit is true. Right. Yeah. With great power come great responsibility. When you learn this, what will it do for you? Mm -hmm. Or what will you do for yourself? How will you do for self? Boom, there it is. It's De Levante. Bruh. It's been a long time <laughs> coming, but we're here. Listen, for everybody that tapped in, make sure that you tap in with my guy, Duran De Levante at the underscore credit underscore hero. Definitely, of course, tap into this program. Because like I said, this, what we touched on today as it pertains to consumer law is literally this much. It's a whole new world in and of itself. And I've been a part of this program. I've been in the, the webinars. It's absolutely bananas. Thank you so, so much for your time. And I really and sincerely hope y'all received a lot of jewels and gems in this video. And if you have, please don't forget to take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day. If you haven't already, just go ahead and slap that like button and show this video some love. I'm Marv Francois. This is Mr. Duran De Levante. Y'all have been good. We've been great. This has been amazing. As always, thank you and God bless. Peace. Thank you very much.